Thinking. Thinking? Dirk, I did something really stupid today. I told a friend. I thought he was my friend. Something I've never told anyone. I thought he'd keep it to himself. And he didn't. Right. Not very loyal, I guess. But Martin, no human being can be completely trusted. There is really only one person you can talk to about things like that. And he'll never tell on you. And that's the Lord. But I just thought I needed to tell someone. You can, Martin, and it's him. I'll tell you a story about how easy it is for well-meaning people to tell tales on others. It's a lesson on being loyal. Now, what's happened? Douglas, how's life treating you? Well, it's the pits if you really want to know, Harry. I feel like I've got a big lump in my throat. You don't say. Harry, can we talk? I mean, we are friends, aren't we? I wouldn't want this to go any farther. You can trust me, Dougie. My lips are sealed. This is just between you and me and the deep blue sea. I've always felt like a brother to you. A brother? I need a friend like that. I've wanted to tell this to somebody for a long time. 
See, a lot of people think I'm a great guy, but I've done a lot of things I'm not too proud of. Goodness, I've never known. For instance? Well, this may shock you, Harry, but I've got to tell somebody. You see, when I was younger, I guess... I guess There's I a lot of people who love to hear juicy yeah. stories. Harry Case was one of them. But not many people are loyal enough to keep things to themselves. They just have to tell someone else. So are you shocked? Look, my boy, it's human to err, and it's divine to forgive. Right? Right. I feel a lot better having told somebody. Thanks for listening, Harry, and thanks for keeping this a secret. Anytime, Dougie. Anytime. Brothers. Brothers. Well, I've got to go now. Mr. Grubbs is waiting for me. Bye. Bye-bye. That was the most incredible thing. I never thought a boy like Douglas could do such tricks like shoplifting. Who's been shoplifting? Oh. Hello there, Flora. Just talking to myself out loud. About shoplifting? Goodness, no. I, well, just had somebody here who told me the most incredible nasty trick he'd done. Awfully sorry now, but still, he had done it. Shoplifted? I'm afraid so. Who was it? I'm sworn to secrecy. I'll never tell. I made a promise. It was Douglas Tweeter, wasn't it? What makes you say that? I just passed him. He just came down this way. I can't say. It was, wasn't it? I didn't tell you. You guessed it. Oh, well, it's a secret with me. I won't tell anyone. But what did he do? Promise? Promise. It's really something. First, he went into Mr. Um, do you see how uh, easy it is to break a promise of secrecy? People who can't keep secrets don't know how to be loyal. When someone trusts you to keep something to yourself and you tell, that's not being loyal. I said, look, my boy, it's human to error and divine to forgive. We've all done things we're not too proud of. Harry, that was good advice. I thought so. Anyway, I better be on my way. Right. Keep this to yourself, or if word like this ever got out, Douglas Tweeter couldn't get a job anywhere. Oh, you can trust me, Harry. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Hi, Gloria. Those flowers are looking good. Thank you. Why couldn't Douglas Tweeter get a job anywhere? Um, <laughs> did I say that? I heard you, every word. It's none of our business. It's the colored past that boy has, Gloria. What do you mean? He's a very nice boy. On the outside, but that's all I'm going to tell you. You can't leave me hanging. I'm your wife. We should share our secrets. Right. And you've got to promise you'll never tell another living soul. I promise. And well, Harry went on to tell his wife all the details of what Douglas had told him before. and trusted him to keep secret. Then, but Harry was not loyal. He had told Flora and now Gloria, and who knows who they would tell now, too. Anyway, I just told him, look, my boy, it's human to err and divine to forgive. We've all made mistakes. That's very good advice. I thought so. Now I know what you mean by saying if this ever got out, Douglas couldn't find a job anywhere. Right, the little scum. <laughs> did you know that the reason we often tell what someone else did to others mm. is because somehow it makes us you feel know, a little better about ourselves? We've all done things that weren't nice to do. Telling on someone else doesn't make you any better than them, even if you've never done what they did. I've done some really miserable things in my day, but I've never stooped that low. Right, me either. Harry, Gloria. Oh, hi, Flora. Hi, hi. Flora. I just came to tell you that I told Mr. Grebs about our boy Douglas. <laughs> you did? You weren't supposed to tell. Well, it weighed heavy on me. I thought Mr. Greb should know what kind of kleptomaniac he had working for him. Oh, dear, I suppose that's true. Look who's coming! It's Douglas, and he doesn't look too happy. Um, I've got to go. I think my buns are burning. Excuse me. Uh, hello, Douglas. Something wrong? You might say that, brother. I don't have a job anymore. What happened? That's what I'd like to know. Somebody told Mr. Greb that I was a kleptomaniac and had a record of shoplifting. It wasn't me. Oh? Then if what I told you was just between you and me in the deep blue sea, I wonder which one of us told Mr. Grebs. It wasn't like that, Douglas. I can explain everything. No, I shouldn't have told you or anybody else. I wanted to talk to somebody, but it just made things worse. I'm sorry. I don't know how this happened. I do. You're just not loyal enough to keep things to yourself. It's you and dear and divine to forgive. Remember that? Remember it yourself, Harry, because you sure aren't perfect. You're just as bad as any of us. Oh, why do I feel like I have a big lump in my throat? I'm sorry, Douglas. Goodbye.
Well, what am I supposed to do? Isn't there anybody I could talk to who won't tell on me? A wife's just bothered me so much that I feel like I have to talk to somebody. Anybody. Because you need to be forgiven, Douglas. Huh? We all need forgiveness. We've all done things that were hurtful and wrong. It's called sin, and it hurts us until we get rid of it. But I tried to talk to Harry, and look what happened to me. You told the wrong person. People don't know what to do about sin except talk about it. God is the one you need to talk to. He's the only one who can get rid of sin. He forgives it and forgets it. Would God forgive me? He's the only one who can. And he will if you mean business and ask him to. Where are you going? I've got to have a private conversation with a loyal friend who can give me what I need. Something that only God can give me. Forgiveness. So remember, don't tell people what only God should know. It is human to make errors, but God will forgive us if we only come to him. He's a loyal friend and he will never tell on us. He'll forgive us. So come and talk to God because he loves us and he wants us to live each day with him without a big lump in our throat. You see, Martin, we need to learn to be loyal. And remember, when we talk to the Lord, we need to realize that he is real and that he is a loyal friend who will never turn on us and he'll forgive us. Thanks, Dirk. I needed to be reminded of that. He's the one I need to sit down and talk to. You do that, Martin. I will. Let's go. Hit the lights, Vince. Take care. Martin told the wrong person, and this guy Barry blabbed his secret all over the place. Oh, well, Martin. Now Martin's secret isn't a secret anymore. Oh, Should have told us, don't you? Yeah. Sometimes I think you can't trust anybody. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You can't. God is the only friend we will ever have that we can really trust completely. Yeah. That's why we shouldn't be afraid to put our lives in his hands. He really wants us to come to him. Yeah. I know. Why don't we watch his parable on the VCR? Oh, yeah. 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 Once there lived the father who owned some very precious gems. For many years, he left them locked away in a safety deposit box in the bank, waiting for the day when it would be the right time to bring them home. The father told his son many wonderful stories about the precious gems. Each jewel was very special to the old man for different reasons. At last, the long-awaited day arrived. Now the time has come for you to bring my precious gems home to me. Here is the key to the safety deposit box. Go to the bank and say to the teller, Today, my father wishes to have his gems released. And so the faithful son obeyed. He hurried along on his way to the city, excited to see the gems he had heard so much about. The gems that would one day be his very own. Open up the safety deposit box, please. Here's the key. Today my father wishes to have his gems released. You're quite a young boy to be given such a great responsibility. I only do as my father tells me. Then she took the key and in a few moments returned with the precious gems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is all of them. Thank you, then. And he gathered them all and put them in the bag. Hurriedly, he left the bank and pressed his way through the crowd, anxious to get back home to show his father. But in all the excitement, one of the gems accidentally fell out of the bag, unnoticed, and rolled into a crack in the sidewalk. Father, I'm home. Come quickly and see the precious gems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Didn't you receive ten? Oh no, one has been lost. And immediately, the father and son set out to find the lost gem. 
Snoopy looked everywhere, retracing all the steps the boy had taken. And what are you looking for? A lost gem. I'll help you look. Come on, everyone. Come help us find the lost gem. People from everywhere joined in the search for the lost jewel. Late into the night, the search party went on until... Father! Father! I found it! I found the lost gem! The people cheered and cried out loud for joy. Let's have a great celebration. For this gem that is so precious to me has been found. and is back in my hands where it belongs. And suddenly the city streets were alive with singing and dancing. And all the people rejoiced that the gem had been found. You are a precious gem, and your heavenly Father wants you back. If you are lost and trying to hide from God, you need to repent from your sin and come home to your rightful place in His hands. He's looking for you, so come. It will make everyone very happy. You see, we can trust God. Yeah. You sure can. I found that out. You sure don't look very sad. I'm not. I learned a big lesson today, and it makes me happy to know that Jesus is a loyal friend we can believe in and trust. Yeah. All right. Trustworthy and dependable. Oh, yeah, Egbert? Huh? Well, what about the time you told on me when I backed into the chicken coop? Yeah. I asked you not to tell, but the minute you had a chance, front page news. Oh, <laughs> that was worse. Well, what about the time you told on me when I put a little bit of weight on, you told everybody? Okay, okay. That's true. Twice. Egbert, we should all try and be as loyal a person as we can, but sometimes we make mistakes. But we can trust God completely, and He wants us to. Yeah. Hey, everybody, the mail's in. All right. Hey, let's read. I wonder who wrote it today. Hey, everybody, listen to this super letter. It's from Janan in Illinois. Ooh, wow. Illinois. It says, Dear Circle Square, my name is Janan. I'm 12 years old and in the seventh grade. I really enjoy your show a lot. <laughs> Great. It helped me to be a better Christian. I used to be the type that said, Oh, I can't do anything right. 
Now that I've found God, I'm a whole new person. Oh, oh, that's that's super. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Janan. Yeah. That was a super letter. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. I love that. Mine, uh, I've got a letter from Mike, and it says, Dear Circle Square, my name is Mike, and I'm 12 years old. My sister's name is Tammy, and she is 9 years old. We love your show. We are very glad that it is on TV. All right. Great. My favorite part is when the play, are the plays when you put it on during the show. Great. We love your singing, and wish you would send us two Circle Square songbooks so we can follow along when you are singing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Your viewers always. Michael and Tammy from Verona, Pennsylvania. All right. Oh, my goodness. And my one, my letter says, Dear Circle Square, I've been meaning to write, but I've never got a chance until now. How is everybody there? Great. Oh, great. great. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that I love your show. It has a lot of meaning. Super. Yeah. I think it is a good show for young people to watch. It shows that all people are important to God. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good. God bless you, Amy from Wooster, Ohio. Thanks for writing. All right. Yeah. Hey, guys, listen to this. Dear Circle Square Gang, I'm 10 years old, and my name is Elizabeth. I'm writing because I really like your show. I see it every week. I wish it came on every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that every show your gang does is very good. They show a good example. All right. God bless you all. Yes. Bye for now, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Circle Square wants to hear from you, too. If you have a question or a problem, we want to help. Right. Or, if you have an idea for the show, write us. We'll send you our new Circle Square songbook so you can sing along with us. That's so right. write soon, because we really want to hear from you. We have to go now, but we hope you enjoyed today's show and that you learned something from it. That's yeah. right. I did. And if you've never come to God before and had a talk with Him, you need to do that because Jesus is a friend you can trust. He'll forgive you and He'll never tell on you. That's right. Before we go, thanks to the Wentworth Heritage Village for allowing us to tape our drama segment there. Visit the village. You'll enjoy it, too. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Kurt, Martin is missing. Oh. Kurt's right. Where's Martin? He's still at school, and he isn't happy. What happened? Well, all I know is that he had a little secret, you know, and he didn't want anybody to know. What? And he felt so guilty, so he went and told this guy, oh, uh, no. um, Barry. Oh, and Barry said, well, you know, you oh, can trust God. me. And... I'm ready to go home. Take care. I guess I better do the same then. Oh, Martin, what are you doing sitting in the dark? Oh, just thinking. Thinking? Dirk, I did something really stupid today. I told a friend. I thought he was my friend. Something I've never told anyone. I thought he'd keep it to himself. And he didn't. Right. Not very loyal, I guess. But Martin, no human being can be completely trusted. There is really only one person you can talk to about things like that, and he'll never tell on you. And that's the Lord. <laughs> <laughs>